You jumped the bandwagon. You're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. Why don't you go f*** yourself, you tiny brain, and I hope this gets picked up. Because you're a moron. I tried to give you a hearing, but you were too annoying for me. You can't handle the criticism, can you? We gotta be talking about Texas. Yeah, exactly. That's it, Texas, Texas, Texas. All the rest is bullshit, in my, in my opinion. I mean, it feels like I'm at a firefighter's fire conference and no one's allowed to speak about water. <laughs> That's one of the great moments, maybe the great moment in Davos history. Rucker Bregman is the author of Utopia for Realists and he joins us now. <laughs> Mr. Bregman, I, I, I can't stop laughing just listening to that. <laughs> and part of it makes me wonder, are you the first person ever to note People are flying private to talk about global warming and that none of them mention tax avoidance. Has anyone ever said that before at Davos that you know of? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on Davos history, but it is a bit hypocritical, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yes. Yes, it is. I, and, and others have noted that. We've noted it on this show. We've just never gone to Davos and said it out loud as you did. So if I was wearing a hat, I would take it off to you. What, was the, what response did you get? Well, I mean, they were not very happy with me, but I'm just, just a, I think, a, a, a random Dutch historian who's basically saying whatever on, around the globe is thinking. You know, the vast majority of Americans, for years and years now, according to the polls, uh, including Fox News viewers and in, including Republicans, are in favor of higher taxes on the rich. You know, higher inheritance taxes, higher top marginal tax rates, uh, higher wealth taxes. It's all really mainstream. But no one's saying that at Davos, just as no one's saying it on Fox News, right? And I think the, the, the explanation for that is quite simple, is that most of the people in Davos, but also here on this channel, have been bought by the billionaire class. You know, you're not meant to say these things. So I just went there and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to say it, just as I'm saying it right here on this channel. Well, what was interesting, I thought, about what you said was that you noted something. I mean, many people have called for higher taxes, but very few Well, not on this channel, is it? I mean, almost all of the pundits on this channel for years have been against higher taxes, right? Even though the, the vast majority of Americans is in Maybe. favor of it. I mean, I would, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it would be interesting to know how many hours of Fox you've watched, but I'm interested in what you said mm -hmm. about tax avoidance. So yeah. you, just because someone faces a specific tax rate does not mean that person pays that tax mm -hmm. rate at all. I don't think Netflix, for example, paid any taxes last year mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So what would you do specifically to make certain that this class of people pays what they're supposed to pay? Well, it's about multiple things. So we should really crack down on tax paradises and on tax avoidance. That's a major issue. But it's also about having higher taxes. So in the 1950s, for example, in the 1960s, in the golden age of capitalism, as historians called it, we had top marginal tax rate for the very rich uh, of about, you know, 70, 80, 90 percent actually under under Eisenhower, the Republican president. And this was also, you know, one of the best periods in American history. Same, same is true for the UK and, and the rest of Europe. Um, so as a historian, for me, it's all not, you know, it's, it's really not rocket science. We should go, just go back to, to simple and straightforward solutions from the, from the past. Right, but this country was sustained, and since you're a historian, I guess you would know this, sustained mm -hmm. by an industrial economy at the time that was broad and deep. That, mm -hmm. that created a middle class, that doesn't exist anymore. So it's an entirely different economy. I wish it did exist. Oh, um, well, but that's not, so that's not really an issue. Would I mean, work the same way with an entirely different economy? Well, I, th I think it would. I mean, uh, America is still pretty much the most powerful country in the world, right? So um, if, it, if it really would want to, it could easily crack down on, uh, on tax paradises. But the thing is, I mean, you guys have brought into power a president that doesn't even want to show its own tax well, returns. Uh, I mean, who knows how many billions he has hidden in the Cayman Islands or in Bermuda. Um, so I think the issue really is, is, is one of corruption and of people being bribed and of not being, you know, not talking about the real issues. Uh, what the family, you know, what the Murdochs basically want you to do is to scapegoat immigrants instead of talking about tax avoidance. So I'm, I'm glad you're now finally raising the issue, but that's what been been happening for the past couple of years. Uh-huh. And I'm taking, I'm taking orders from the Murdochs, is that what you're saying? 
No, I mean, it doesn't work that directly. But, I mean, you've been part of the Cato Institute, right? You're, you've been a senior fellow there for years. You've been, you've been taking their dirty money. They're funded by Koch billionaires, you know? Wait, why don't you tell me how it does work? Well, it works by you taking their dirty money. It's as easy as that. I mean, you are a millionaire funded by billionaires. That's what you are. And I'm glad you now finally jumped the bandwagon, you know, of people like Bernie Sanders and AOC. But you're not, you're not part of the solution, uh, Mr. Mr. Carlson. You're part of the problem, actually. AOC, wait, but, but can I just say, and you, 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 It's I'm true, not, right? It's true, right, that all the, all the anchors... All the anchors on Fox, <laughs> they're all millionaires. How is this possible? Well, it's very easy. You're just not talking about certain things. It doesn't even, Fox doesn't even play where you are. It doesn't play where you are. <laughs> well, have you heard of the internet? <laughs> I can watch things whatever I want, you know? I have, actually. I, I, I can't say I'm a great fan of your show, but I do my homework when you invite me on your show. So... I mean, you're probably not going to air this, uh, but I went to Davos to speak truth to power, and I'm doing exactly the same thing right now. You might not like it, but you're a millionaire funded by billionaires, and that's the reason why you're not talking about these issues. But I am talking about these issues. Yeah, only now. Come on, you jumped the bandwagon. You're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. Why don't you go f yourself, you tiny brain, and I hope this gets picked up, because you're a moron. I tried to give you a hearing, but you were too f annoying for me. Uh, you can't handle the criticism, can you? <laughs> There's a war on alternative media. There's a war where they're trying to criminalize political expression. There's a war where they're trying to criminalize free speech. 